we saw uh, Dustin Penn defeat uh, a well-versed Esper Stoneblade player with, who is playing for him to Turok main. We saw that around, I think it was round three. Um, and now he is facing a deck, again, that doesn't exactly have a lot of hate for Reanimator. We're looking at the sideboard here, and he is up to forceable on the board and the notion theme, that's about it. So let's get underway here. Undefeated matchups. In the main deck, Andrew Tenjum's leaning on just two Force of Will, uh, four Deathrite Shaman, and you know maybe those him to Torox work out, maybe they don't, uh, to actually take down his reanimator opponent. And as we see from a turn one underground, so he doesn't have a Deathrite Shaman. Right, and that's obviously the, the best possible scenario for Dustin. Uh, that's a card that you just your, your heart sinks a little bit when you see it on turn one. And now he has a pretty much good sense of relief here. You see Vernon Catacomb, so you automatically know Andrew is probably on Buck. So we got a fetch here. We're going to see what Andrew digs up. Uh, Dustin looking pretty happy, I'm sure. He's like, if this is a matchup he likes to play against, he definitely wants to avoid decks that have access to Rest in Peace, uh, decks that have probably some kind of surgical extraction, uh, cyborg plan. But he, if he knows Charlotte's Bug, he knows that they are having no part of that graveyard hate. Right. The Cascade Engine really restricts uh, the kinds of cards you can use to disrupt your opponent. Uh, they have to be, you know, pretty versatile cards if they cost less than three mana, because otherwise you're disrupting your entire engine. Absolutely. Here's a card you mentioned earlier, him, and let's see if him can hit well. If it doesn't hit well, it hits a Grizzle Brain, the ram is and kills you. If it hits well, mm -hmm. then we're uh, in good shape. And obviously, this is the best possible situation. I actually prefer brainstorming, letting him hit me if I'm reanimator, rather than force of willing it, because you can put the valuable reanimate card on top, and then, you know, go nuts. Hope you uh, you get real lucky here. Help a brother out. Yeah, help a brother <laughs> out. Hell yeah, help me out here. I mean, I don't have the careful study here. You can actually do all the hard work for me. It's uh, in a modern PTQ, I had an opponent who thought scoured me, and I was playing a graveyard based deck, and he milled Protean Hulk, and then I untapped him footsteps and killed him. So it's always fun when your opponent helps you win the game. So. Let's see the same case. Looks like Dustin's putting an animate dead on top and a careful study on bottom, just the line that you uh, predicted. So we can only assume that he has one of his large fatties in his hand, and that's what he's hoping for. Uh, if he's putting the careful study down a card, that probably means he doesn't have a reanimate, as otherwise, you know, he, he might be more inclined to put careful study than reanimate. So if the yeah. render or whatever is still in his hand, he can play study, pitch it, and then play the reanimate immediately afterwards. Yeah, I think he uh, he's doing the right line here. Uh, if he had the one mana one, he could easily do it next turn, but since he has a two mana one, he needs to protect both careful study in case that he hits the careful study and not the grizzle brand. Because in that scenario, you're going to be in a world of hurt. He actually has Entomb too, so he has all yeah. the pieces. He, the pieces. He, he could just be safe and put Entomb Anime Dead on top, so no matter what he'll be able to, or Anime Dead and Entomb, so no matter what he'll be able to do it anyway. I think he might only have one land, and maybe that's his concern. Well, that's yeah. Uh, is putting back, he might maybe feel like, man, if he hits my land, then I'm going to be in really bad shape. Yeah, uh, I can't really. I, I actually, can't I don't see, see any land. I think I see one on the left, but I'm not. Okay. I'm not 100. Yeah, it's uh, definitely a hard choice. There's lots of different things you can do at this point. Andrew has the easy choice. You just kind of throw him out there and say, you know. Yeah. Something. One of the things I like about Charter's Bug is it is kind of a brute force legacy deck. You know, uh, you're just trying to accrue a lot of value and a lot of advantage. You don't actually have to, you know target your spells really that carefully as many of them are just, you know, incredible. Like Ancestral Vision, well, that one's going to come yeah, at me. Yeah. Uh, I want to suspend it quick so I get my cards faster. Yeah. Yep. Uh, that about covers it. That's, <laughs> that's all you need to know. Yeah, it pretty much fans the flames of all their other powerful cards, too. Being able to do it for free is pretty pretty nice. Yeah. I think he has a daze in his hand. I mean, he might just daze this. You know. Nah, he's going to... Uh, yeah, I think that'd be a little loose. I, I like your line of just... Letting the him resolve, see what's what. Yeah, Especially I, because I believe he has another brainstorm, so you know he, he can, if he has a fetch, uh, shuffle up the deck. He can use a tomb to shuffle up the deck, right? Uh, and then you know brainstorm for more cards, more answers, whatever he actually winds up needing. There's no guarantee this him actually even does you know, anything. Right. So many cards that uh, Andrew hits that actually just don't do anything. Force a little careful study. Uh, that careful seems like. That's the one he wanted to keep, at least a careful study. So let's see what he's got uh, cooking over here. He did not hit uh, said Grizzlebrand. Yeah, there's definitely a Grizzlebrand there. We see it now. Yeah, see the black card there. the anime dead. So if he doesn't have a second land... Uh, I'm pretty sure he's about to play land. Marsh oh, yeah, Blatt, there you I go. think was the land I saw. Yeah, swamp. No, okay. Swamp. So he, I guess he says go here? Lucky for him, he has another Brainstorm, so he can, he can protect the spells again. And this time, nearly guaranteeing uh, 
hitting that Grizzle Moran. But hitting that careful study is pretty rough. Now he's going to have to entomb, which is not bad. And then Animate Dead, he's going to have to go the old-fashioned route. And if he knows Charlotte's Blood, he knows there are literally two answers in Charlotte's Blood to stop that, and that's Force of Will, Force of Will. Yeah. Andrew, uh, having seen the careful study, obviously knows that Dustin is on Reanimator, uh, and he knows he's in dire straits. Uh, we see him throwing back an abrupt decay there. He knows he won't need it. His brainstorm, he's going to fetch, shuffle things up, and play a Tarmac Boy. Try and get a threat on board before Dustin can just kill him, or maybe not. Go. Uh, what's in his hand? He, he might have... Did he draw? Yeah, there's no instant speed two-mana spell. I'm not sure what he could have drawn. Maybe he doesn't have Tarmac Boy? I thought he, I thought I saw Tarmac Boy. I thought I saw Tarmac Boy, too. We won't be able to see. His hand is uh, close yeah. to the cuff there, so we're going to have to wait and see. We did, uh, I did see a Jason Mine Sculptor. Yeah. I did see a Charles Asian. Definitely good to hang on to the Jace, as it's you know, one of the few ways to handle a reanimated fatty. The problem with reanimator is once you get one Crystal Brand into play, it's very difficult uh, to avoid them getting another one into play. They exactly. Keep jamming them. The seven cards are almost certain uh, to find a new way to put a Crystal Brand into play. Right. Yeah. Killing it once is just not a, not a winning strategy. All right. So he's going to... I don't think you... Play around anything. Uh, you, <laughs> I, 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 I draw a forcible. Oh, well, there, there we go. Now we're just easy peasy here. Just gonna go ahead and uh, put this uh, six seven in place. Slightly smaller because the anime dead. Still a pretty good uh, force to be reckoned with. I don't uh, know. Now that you're not breaking even on life link and card strong. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. It's clearly, clearly not really uh, the legacy powerhouse we're, we're used to seeing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree with that. And if they get rid of an anime dead, it's, they can disenchant killing Grizzle Brand. That's just, yeah. it's just Oh, not... actually, the Abrupt Decay uh, obviously oh. is quite useful for that. Perhaps Andrew reevaluated, decided he wanted to hold open Abrupt Decay. Right. Uh, which, you know, he can use that now, I assume, in response. Sad for him. It's just that drawing seven cards, even if he does this, is pretty, like you said, it's just going to delay the inevitable of getting Grizzle Brand back. This is definitely a rougher matchup. It, 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 Dustin 6 0 oh, for a reason. This is probably a well positioned. Uh, tournament to play Reanimator in. Uh, if people aren't packing the graveyard hate, you're good to go. But picture Dustin playing against uh, uh, Feline's opponent last round with main deck two rest in peace. Eh, I kind of don't want to see that deck, you know. Yeah. It's about legacy, dodging and weaving the bad ones and playing decks that don't have much answer to you. So no abrupt decay. So no he did what you said. He did shuffle did, away. Did okay. And he might not see what you saw because I didn't see it at first either. So he might not see that he can abrupt decay the anime dead. Yeah, it's possible Andrew didn't make the read on what his opponent was playing uh, on that first turn. As I, I think I see a discover still in his hand, which that card right. is clearly not doing a lot. No, uh, definitely not. He's going to try to play Jace here to balance Grizzlebrand. I think Dustin will answer with Force of Will and then take full control of this game. Yeah, that seems likely. One more side event. So, fetching his land in here, we definitely have a Jace the Mind Sculptor coming out. One of the best cards of all time, arguably the best. But, not going to resolve. Not going to resolve. Oh. Dustin's going to go ahead and draw seven first. No need to pitch the brainstorm that we know he has in his hand. Right, the there's plenty of junk he can pitch there. Yeah, we'll just find a careful a, study or something. A weaker card, perhaps a daze. Yeah, there's a daze. Yeah, there just if he hits that daze, boom. He could have. Uh, yeah, I mean that's just the better play to do. I, I prefer saving those forces for whatever Andrew might have. Problem is, I think Andrew's probably kicking himself if he actually realizes that he can abrupt decay animate dead because he, he shuffled it away. Yeah. So that option is now uh, in the wind. I'm curious if he maybe just didn't see the careful study or uh, you know, just didn't connect it, all the dots there because it does seem like the brainstorm he made on uh, turn three really wound up just not panning out in yeah. his favor. He has no pressure, no defense, uh, now he's just going to get gristle branded. And to be fair, uh, it is a really tough matchup. Game one. Like yeah. we, we already discussed, his list is not set up to even, defeat yeah. this kind of a combo deck. Because even if he does abrupt decay, I think he's still going to lose the match anyway. Yeah, his I, primary defense against combos is him, and it's just it's really not the kind of defense you want against reanimator. Right, that's <laughs> it's good against every combo deck, not the greatest against this deck. And he's going to go ahead and get probably Elish Norn to to top off his uh, aggressive start here. He's going to do a prior to combat to get two more damage in, I think. He might get Tied, uh, Spout Tyrant. He also has that in his deck. He also has Iona. Iona, Iona against, yeah, if you name green or black here, uh, then you're pretty much uh, 
safe, safe for the rest of the match. Yeah, I would probably, I don't know, you could actually make a case for all of the colors. Right, blue for uh, Jace too. Yeah, uh, black locks out Liliana. Yeah, I think we named, I think you named black here. I, I, I like black here. Because black locks out yeah. Liliana and Abrupt Decay. You're not really worried about Jace at this point. I agree with your assessment. Right, so uh, you can name blue, which is obviously the vast majority of yeah, Tenjin's well, deck, but the blue cards actually aren't the important ones. Right, yeah, he's not going to be visioning anytime soon. He's not going to be uh, brainstorming. It's not going to really do too much for him. I think he's going to name black. Yeah, we're going to get a, a heads up. We have we have the confirmation. He did name black. Okay. Uh, and that'll, that'll pretty much just put Tenjin Moy in a turn. Yeah, there's there's really nothing in Dustin's deck that he can actually draw, or excuse me, Andrew's deck to, that he can draw in order to come out of the situation. I mean, to be fair, there's not many cards anyone can draw to beat an Iona naming a primary color and then a Grizzle Brand of Glass. Yep. So, yeah, packing it up. All right, let's move to sideboards. Uh, Andrew's sideboard is a little interesting. He has three Submerge, two Force of Will, two Arcane Lab, two Baleful Strikes, two Fluster Storm, two Massacre, a Notion Thief, and a Life from the Lord. That's, that's really not much uh, for this matchup. Obviously, he'll be bringing in the Fluster Storms as it's a reasonable counterspell against right. both the, uh, the Show and Tell Cyborg plan and the Reanimate plan that uh, you know, Dustin's already running. I imagine he'll bring in the Notion Thief as well. No real reason not to, and uh, his additional Force of Wills, but I'm not really sure what else. Uh, Arcane Lab would be a little awkward, but it has the uh, you know reasonable functionality of making it so that your opponent's defensive forces and dazes are you know, nothing. Yeah, Do real bad. Yeah, dead cards almost. And I agree. We actually saw Notion Thief earlier with a show and tell. He played Grizzlebrand. He played Notion Thief, and then the, you know a Notion Thief wins that fight yep. every time. So uh, it's pretty much one of those things where it's not that great. It's not that bad. I'm gonna bring it in too. On this side, we have. A reanimate sideboard, so it's obviously a little bit weaker. Because you really, in these combo decks, can't really board out a whole lot. You can't board out key card draw spells, and key reanimate spells, and obviously you have such a small amount of creatures that you can't board all that out either. He is going to bring in, however, a few cards here. He's going to have any kind of counter magic he's going to bring in, and or maybe show and tell also, because in this matchup he might be afraid of uh, graveyard hate, even though we all know he doesn't have any. Pretty much their knee-jerk yeah. reaction is when you see black in any way, or you see control decks, you bring in show and tell because if they play like a uh, uh, Relic of Progenitus or Surgical Extraction, you're like, eh, that's all nice and dandy, I'm going to show and tell and be able to get you anyway. Uh, he has a Chain of Vapor, he has Misdirection, he has Thought Seize. If I was him, I would just bring in the Thought Seize and call it a day. And just to see, yeah. take a look at the hand. Your oh look, your deck's the same as it was game one, <laughs> and now you're dead again <laughs> because this matchup is a nightmare. But luckily in Magic, draws can happen, things can happen, mulligans can happen, and uh, I never count anyone out. I just don't want to be on uh, Dustin's side of the table for game two here. One of the most interesting aspects of sideboarding side. here, I think, uh, is you, we see Dustin has four Pithy Needle. So that's a pretty reasonable sideboard card against, you know, or I should say, four graveyard dependent decks, as a lot of the best cards in Legacy against graveyard decks are artifacts that sit in play. Relic Virgenis, Tormod's Crypt, and Nihil Spellbomb. Right. Nihil Spellbomb is actually a very common sideboard card in Shardless Bug, right. but it's one that Andrew is not running. Right, so uh, I see him bringing in Pit the Needle then and then for yeah. I mean, it, it, there actually isn't a real uh, damaging reason not to bring it in because Pit the Needle is still good against a lot of cards that he's going to play. You can name like uh, a Creeping Tar Pit early on, or Jace, or Liliana, or something like that. So it's not, like, it's, not, it's not a dead card. And you can also discard it to uh, careful, uh, careful Study if it's obviously not doing you any good at the time. It looks like we're getting a judge ruling on Anime Dead. Probably an Oracle text. Andrew Weird. wants to know exactly how it works. Definitely um, for the Abrupt Decay. I yeah. think he realizes it now. Um, I wouldn't kick yourself too hard, though, Andrew, because this if you Abrupt Decay it, he draws you know 14 cards in response, and he's it's coming back. There's nothing really you can do about it. It'll be interesting. Uh, I, I'm actually a big fan of Nihil Spellbomb. I, I watched Jerry use it. In the Invitational that he won, uh, you were there, I, I, <laughs> if I recall. I, I was there, I saw it, yeah. I felt yeah. it. One it was of the not things fun. that was most impressive to me was not actually the Nihil Spellbomb against these graveyard decks. That's just kind of obvious, but heavy handed, if you will. Obviously, Nihil Spell was pretty good against Reanimator or whatever. Right. But I saw Jerry bringing it in against, uh, you know, like Deathblade decks, uh, Stoneblade decks. Any any deck that has access to, you know, Deathrite Shaman or Snapcast Rage, he can use the Nihil Spellbomb and be able to actually just generate a little bit of value. Yeah. Uh, and if he's doing that, he's obviously making cards like Snapcast Rage way worse. And it also works pretty well with his Shardless Agents to help turn them into three mana two twos that can trip. Maybe with a little hot bit of a higher upside because the Nihil Spellbomb obviously can do more than just draw a card. 
Uh, and that was a utility I actually hadn't really considered for the card. Uh, Jerry, obviously, significantly more experienced with Sharpest Bug than me, but with him having played you know, multiple tournaments with it, and right. I've never played a match, but uh, I I learned a fair bit about the utility of Niles Ball in I, the deck yeah. that day. I definitely got it on. I was on the other side of the beating for that, and I remember it, it, it shuts down a lot of Stoneblade, and you wouldn't think of Stoneblade being a very graveyard-oriented deck, but since it produces such advantage by drawing a card and dealing with a Lingering Souls or Snapcaster Mage right. effect, then it's a it's a presence, and uh, it's not in this list. Uh, I'm sure he has his reasons. A lot of people actually, again, play and build a deck and tweak it for what they think. They think there's going to be no reanimator, and they're going to take it out of their deck, even though it's decent against other things too. And I think that's a mistake because, like we talked about in Legacy earlier, it's an expensive format. When people build their reanimate deck or their uh, Rug Delver deck or their Esper Blade deck, they spend their hundreds and then thousands of dollars on the deck. A lot of people, maybe dusting himself with reanimator, do you think he wants to go out and buy a whole other deck? Oh, Rug Delver's good today. I'm going to go spend, you know, $2,200. I'm going to go build it. No, he's going to be quite content with playing reanimator. And you're going to run into those people with their foil out dredge decks and their foil out reanimator decks and their beta duel decks that mm -hmm. they just love to death and they're unwilling to change. Not everybody is a, uh, you know, an AJ Sacher, uh, Jerry Thompson, Star City guy who is willing to, hey, I'm going to go play a new legacy deck this week. I'll play one this week. So, <laughs> the the Nile Spellbomb issue is also, you know, maybe it's a very easy card to not realize you can use in that way. You know, if I hadn't seen Jerry boarding a Nile Spellbomb against like basically every deck with Island in it at the uh, Invitational, I would never have considered that it was a reasonable card to be boarding in against decks like Stoneblade. Uh, when you know, after once you see it in play, you see the, the effect that it actually has. You're like, oh, well, that actually is pretty good. Uh, so you know, if I'm you know picking up a net deck, testing it out. Trying out Nile Spall Bombs in my sideboard, I might come to the conclusion this card's really narrow. I don't bring it in against enough decks. I'm going to get rid of it and play some different hate. Uh, I think that's a really easy conclusion to come to. And you know, one of the dangers of playing a deck where you don't have the experience of having built it from the ground up, especially the sideboard. Uh, your sideboard is only as good as you know how to wield it, obviously. Right. Yeah. I always thought the Japanese were messing with us because they would add like one circle protection red in their sideboard, <laughs> and just just for no reason. And I, I always kind of use that as an example. When you pick up a net deck, or you pick up a deck that's popular. You're not going to know why the sideboard cards are there, especially in Legacy when it's, look at the sideboard, it's 3 2 2 2 2 2 2 1 1. So a sideboard like that, he knows exactly why those two Arcane Laboratories are there, and the Belleville Strix coming against this, and the uh, you know Massacre's coming against this. So he knows, and if you pick up the deck, if you don't play test, you're not going to know too much about sideboarding that for that particular matchup. So it looks like we are having... Uh, a little extended sideboarding here. I think they took a few minutes to figure out yeah. the judge ruling on the anime dead. Um, Andrew will be on the play. Oracle text on the uh, ancient card, which is anime dead. Yeah, funny thing about anime dead, it does very, you know, only basically what it says <laughs> at this point. Um, right. The card text on the older versions is so far removed from what the actual one does. However, if you, you know, want to see it and it's new and improved glory there's the, the graveborn version yeah very shiny sure, uh, yeah. also a little more accurate with its rune stuff it is it uh doesn't talk about burying it if it goes away kind of stuff anymore <laughs> <clears throat> new terms in old terms out so andrew is going to be looking for a turn one uh ancestral vision and then the rest of his cards in his hand need to be disruption i think not all of them, of course, but a uh, force of will, maybe a hem and a blue card. That might be enough to keep him, in, you know, head above water here. I don't think, and I've seen this before, Reanimator, when they get those draws where they're just like, uh, in a turn and tomb, untap, anime dead, force your force. Yeah. You're just dead. And that's just a, a, a dilemma that you run into. And it's not like it's an accident. Why do you? That's the reason why reanimators play reanimator. You know, they don't play this deck to be fair. They play this deck to put a seven-seven in play on turn two. Yeah, if I'm Tenjum, I think I'm throwing away probably any seven that doesn't contain like land death right shaman, just because uh, any hand with that particular combination of cards is immediately going to be very, very strong. Right. I meant my um, statement. I think turn one death right is a little better than ancestral vision, or a lot better. So, yeah, uh, yeah that's definitely the optimal start here. I, I might even be willing to go to five. My six would have to be like a very respectable hand without Death Rate Shaman in order for me to consider keeping it. Right. And even a five card with Death Rate Shaman is probably better than just a slightly above average seven. Even I agree. It doesn't have and Reanimator really can't punish you for mulliganing. They're playing solitaire and they're going to hope for the best. He keeps a seven. 
No death right. I yeah, see like force will. Two fluster storms, a force will, and an abrupt decay. So that's actually Good a game enough. with a lot of fight. <laughs> Good uh, enough. The biggest issue is that he doesn't have pressure. So Dustin can just try and combo off, right. fail, uh, try and combo off again, fail, and Andrew's not doing anything. Right. It doesn't matter. Dustin can just keep careful saying and brainstorming his way into success. I cannot stand the abrupt decay being in the deck. Uh, even, again, sure you're going to kill the reanimate, but it's too late at that point. You know what I mean? It's it's one of those. They're going to do it again, and it doesn't target anything else in the problem. It's not like a sword to plowshare, which will hit a reanimated Grizzlebrand, an animated dead Grizzlebrand, an exhumed Grizzlebrand. The abrupt decay is only for animated dead. Yeah, Dustin played his Lotus Petal on turn one to protect his Entomb against potential dazes. Uh, not a common card to see in Shardless Bug, but keep in mind Dustin didn't actually see a Shardless Agent last game. Doesn't right. necessarily know that Andrew is playing Shardless Bug. He could play it, be playing some other Bug Control variant. Yeah, it could be, so, yeah. Could be. Dustin continuing to play around potential spells he could fight. Uh, I also saw Pithing Needle in Dustin's hand. He did do as we theorized, he probably would. Uh, Nile Spell Bomb, very common card in Bug sideboards. Went ahead and brought in that Pithing Needle to potentially protect against it. Sounds good to me. Uh, he is Fluster Storming this for two. I like it. Uh, it's hard to kind of weigh the odds. If you have Entomb and you don't counter it, and they have three reanimate re spells in their hand, you feel like an idiot. If they have Entomb and they're holding Entomb Careful Study and no reanimate re spells, you feel slow too. But you honestly, you don't lose in his hand, you just counter what they throw in your face. You gotta do it. You can't really try to next level and say, sure, go ahead, I'll get you later. There's a lot of nuance to it. It, it comes from you know playing the deck, watching your opponent, getting a feel for what spells you think they might have. For example, Dustin, you know, he watched Andrew think for a significant amount of time before he went ahead and played this Buster Storm. Right. What does that tell Dustin about what Andrew might have? Does it mean he thinks Andrew has Ooh. more counters? Or does he think it means Andrew has less? Right. Yeah. Probably. Probably more. I mean, I would if I'm Dustin, I'm still play a little careful. I definitely I love show and tell here because at worst case scenario. You're show and telling, and then nothing happens. So it doesn't really hurt you that much, you know? Exactly. This is another one for one. Yeah, he loses the Lotus Petal. Well, if he has another land, he doesn't actually need more than three mana to operate. So. Right, right. If I'm Andrew, I'm like, man, if I get a free mana, I'm going to throw this awful abrupt decay at that Lotus Petal and <laughs> get off the board. Maybe mana deny him a little bit. I would do that in the turn if there's no action anyway. I think I would not do that with an abrupt decay in hand. Uh, but it's nice that if the pedal's in play, my Shardless Agent can actually cascade into a decay and it not be dead. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that that's a pretty well, Hopefully, I, if he left in more than one or two abrupt decays, I'm going to be very shocked. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure he boarded it down to pr probably three, maybe two. Yeah. Alright, so Andrew on taps here. He has uh, got a Delta, so he's mana. He's fine on the mana. He's also got a Creeping Tar Pit. Well, that's another Pit the Needle target. Yeah, there's actually a good thing, you know, I wonder how many Dustin brought in. Do you think he brought in the full four? Because there are so many good targets between the potential Nile Spell Bomb we discussed, Creeping Tarpet, and even Deathrite Shaman. There's I think just he, a lot of things you can name. Yeah, you know? I think I think he brings in one or two, maybe two, probably two, and then if he sees a lot of stuff that he can't handle, he'll bring in the full four. I don't think he can afford to bring in four at one time. Uh, again, it's one of these combo things. It's hard to bring in four of a card when you're relying on the rest of your cards to win. I agree with you, but at the same time, if I... If Dustin has four Pithy Needle in his sideboard, then that means he's planning to bring in four somewhere. And right, if right. not here, I'm, I'm not really sure where. I, I think he has to see, especially when you're up a game, I, I definitely wouldn't bring in four the first time. If I lose the Tormon script, then four come in. But then again, one should do the trick if he draws it. And you're playing a deck with Ponder, Careful Study, Brainstorm, you're more likely going to hit one Pithy Needle to bring in two. Here's a uh, Dustin, you know, tanking a little bit on whether he should show until this turn. A cascading issue against blue decks is, you know, you decide to play around days. You wait a turn. Next turn, you're about to go for it, and you're like, oh, well, what if he has days and spell and or spell pierce? And now you want to wait another turn, and you're just giving them a lot of turns. So Dustin, right to bite the bullet here. He kept his lotus petal around because he didn't want to lose that for nothing. Right. But will Andrew be able to capitalize? Obviously, he has another fluster storm he can use. I'm not sure if he has a second blue card though. Uh, for sports rules, so he may be wary of burning his only blue card for a more important card count. And he has to respect the shell until, right? Like right. He just has to assume Dustin casts this, it means there's a crystal brand or similar fatty awaiting him. Yeah, I think it's just a, a no brainer encounter here. Um, I see the use of Flusterstorm over Spell Pierce more and more. Um, I'm starting to kind of kind of like that actually. I might actually switch mm -hmm. my tune here. 
plus one reads counter target instant or sorcery unless they pay one, right? Yeah. It's not, so it doesn't hit Planeswalkers. It can't hit Planeswalkers, which is a big deal in Legacy under right. the new rules with M14. Being able to counter a, an early Liliana the Veil or Jace the Mind Sculptor is a little more important than it used to be. So uh, I actually feel like I might be a reversing trend. I, I right. like Flusterstorm a lot in the previous format. I might be switching gears and uh, spell piercing a little more frequently. Yeah, actually now, after seeing Instant or Sorcery here, not any like non-land or non-creature permanent, I'm pretty much anti-Flusterstorm all together <laughs> now. Yeah, I'm not, uh, I'm not willing to... Just for the, it's such a minor advantage. Uh, obviously, it pr creates two counter spells, which means you're going to be able to force spike something guaranteed. They're not going to be able to counter your uh, force of will, your spell spell pierce. But I don't like it here uh, in this format. I agree with you. So Andrew here is going to play a shardless agent and in his let's cascade see time. What we get spin the wheel. Yeah, let's uh, not not that. And ah. that's my favorite is one. Not bad, not bad. Three more cards will help Andrew's cause. And we see that Dustin is actually uh, a little bit on air. He's got Land, Iona, Force of Will, and I can't really tell what his last card is, but uh, no one card is actually very impressive. In no, this not at all. So we know that his hand is actually pretty vulnerable right and now. Andrew drew two more Ancestral Visions. Yeah, he's definitely going to keep one of those, at least, to burn his Force of Will with. Right, and I definitely would suspend one here, too. Right. Uh, Andrew appears to agree. Looks like he's going to crack Pluto Delta for any land that produces blue and suspend Ancestral Vision. Uh, and then he's going to try and put Dustin on the clock. He's got five damage in play between the Tarpet and the Shardless Agent. And I imagine that's what he'll be doing for the next few turns. Activate, swing five. Activate, swing five. Until Dustin does something that makes some changes too. Yeah, I definitely like... Uh, I don't like sitting around with combo decks. I definitely like to end the game as fast as possible, even if it means a minor risk if I have like one counter spell in my hand. Uh, but I, I, he obviously doesn't have any t uh, mana using counter spells. He has one force of will. And a lot of times the bluff doesn't work against these decks. If he draws it and casts it and you're holding back the bluff, you're going to feel real silly if you could have got 15 damage over the creeping target. I actually see a, uh, a Tarmogoyf in Andrew's hand, so he may take a break, not get the tarp going quite so fast uh, in order to play the Tarmogoyf. Of course, if this Pithing Needle name's Creeping Tarpet, then, then he'll definitely just play tar Tarmogoyf next turn. Yeah, I think he names Jason my sculptor here, even though there isn't one. Uh, that's what I would name. It's just too dangerous. I don't think that I would, actually. Maybe like you're, if you, you can't do, beat a Jason to resolves at this point, because then any reanimate he does, like for especially with Elishnor or something like that, I don't think he's gonna win. I'm interested to see what he named. I agree that that's an issue, but if that's the case, then you're basically gambling that Andrew drew a Jace in his three cards or the card he draws this turn. Which it's a lot clearly of cards, didn't have yeah. one last turn. Really yeah. just cast it, right? Like, Four, or four extra cards in this deck with all the digging is pretty uh, pretty good. Or Death Rite Shaman would be a decent We're gonna name get too. a confirmation on what the Pithy Needle names. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely Death Rite or Jace. If I was in issues, Creeping Tarp is just not threatening enough. At this his point. hand is pretty rough. You're, you're right on. He named the Jace the Mind Sculptor. It's just like it, the clock. Obviously, it gives him a five four turn clock. But then again, he's tapping all out to do this. I think he's afraid of being Fate Sealed too to have his uh, draws controlled. Well, he has the the Polluted Delta, so I think that's a maybe not a big concern, but. Is Andrew also going to suspend his other vision? I actually... Okay. You play Death Rite. Uh, yeah, I definitely wouldn't suspend the other vision. The odds of this game taking another four turns are pretty low. Very low. And so. especially with Andrew having Tarmogoyf, and Dustin knows he has access to it, he knows that this uh, clock of a Shardless Age is going to increase pretty quickly just by uh, playing one of these gigantic two drops here. Yeah, we're basically putting Dustin on... It's very close to a two-turn clock. I think it... Yeah, it is, it is a two-turn clock unless Dustin does something else. He does. He pithy needles. This time, I assume death right. shot. This gives it a perfect example of, and as we discussed, you can't bring in this many pithy needles in naming. If you're pithy needle naming Jace and Death Rite and Creeping Tarpet, and then your last card in your hand is Iona, you got to look back at your your deck and say, you know what? Yeah. I need some answers to hate. But then again, my deck is an all-in deck. I'm trying to kill you. I can't just go all out here and say, you know what? Stop creeping, creeping tarpet. Stop your J. Stop your death right. Ha! Take that, and sure. expect to win those matchups. Look at game one. He hasn't. Uh, Andrew hasn't played one cyber card besides the flusterstorm here. So Dustin pretty much battling against the game one version plus flusterstorm, and needs to be able just to do what he did the first game. It does appear that he may have diluted his deck a fair bit. Uh, to be fair, Andrew's draw was very strong, and once he hit that Shardos agent to actually create some pressure, like that was a turning point in the game. Uh, up until he had Shardos agent. They were both basically just sitting there drawing cards, and uh, you know Dustin could obviously draw into the combo. Andrew could obviously draw some threats. Yeah, and I just realized that uh, Pippin Needle leaving that in or this mini makes a Brook to kick good. 
That's true as well. Yeah, and that's we don't want abrupt decay to be good here. That's exactly what Andrew's going to go ahead and do. It looks like he's abrupt decaying the pithing needle, naming Deathrite Shaman. Important to note, he did it before combat to grow his Tarmogoyf yeah. for an extra point of damage. Real big. All right, well, Dusty's going to probably lose this game, and after board, definitely I would take out all this junk he brought in. He didn't see any kind of graveyard hate when it came to artifacts. I board out a couple of Lotus Petals. You're on the play. You don't really need to go turn one kill you. I wouldn't board all the Lotus Petals out. Board out maybe one or two, and I'd bring in Thoughtseize as a better turn one drop here. All right, so we got a situation here of Dustin just on the ropes. Grim. We know that Andrew has a Force of Will. Dustin also has a Force of Will. But even if he gets Iona in play, it doesn't really do much here. There goes the Entomb and the Instep, burning Dustin for two. I also like, like Misdirection here like in the sideboard too. also. Misdirection is good against Force of Will, and also, you want to hit me? Eh, I don't really mind, but how about you get him? Let's do yeah. that. It's, it's strong against uh, Hindutorak, for sure. Ancestral uh, Vision. It's pretty mediocre against Foster Storm, though. <laughs> yeah, pretty good, pretty good against Ancestral Vision, though. Also Woo. true. I'll take all those cards. All right, Dustin, let's go back to the yeah. board here. Let's cut a couple of those Pithy Needles. We need to add some Misdirections, at least one. Definitely the Thought Seasons, and I think that's all you need. I don't know if he can afford to cut the, the Pithy Needles, though. Like, what does he do if there's just a turn one Death or and it doesn't have a needle? You know, I think it might be just a necessary. Maybe Chain of Vapor might be a, a better all, answer all where you can uh, do it in a turn as a speed. I kind of believe that. Uh, it does It does let you dodge the abrupt decays. But remember, uh, Dust is on the play, and he's going to have up to four Thought Seas after mm -hmm. board. And four Thought Seas two days after board, so the chance of the, and four Force of Will. So he has plenty of ways to answer the turn one Death Right Shaman for, by preventing it from getting into play. Sure. So, I mean, obviously, you can't always, you know, bank on that. But I think that the other cards like Pithy Needle are so bad against this version of Bug that you can't play like a control deck stopping individual threatening things coming at you. I think that the, the big issue is Death Rick Shaman is just such a relevant card. I, that's, that's the only reason. In the matchup, you know, we were talking about Andrew's even opening hands, how, you know, we would mulligan for Death Rick Shaman barring a hand that has, you know, like two or three other pieces of meaningful interaction. Right. Uh, you saw Andrew, that game, keeps a hand that has a lot of meaningful interaction, no pressure. Uh, but Deathrite Shaman, it's both pressure and meaningful interaction. Right. It's just so valuable. I, I'm almost with you if I was on the draw. I think okay. I think I would have Pit the Needle on the draw so I can answer Deathrite Shaman. But I think that any decent hand I have as Reanimator, I'm either going to, A, be able to Thought Seize, Force of Old Days, uh, you know, counter your death rush I'm going to remove from your hand or B I'm going to kill you on turn 2 anyway so don't worry about it I'm certainly willing to entertain the theory I'm by no means I'm not even a reanimator re pilot much less a reanimator right. expert neither am I <laughs> uh, it's, it's an interesting case though it's just, I just all, all I know is that from the experience of being around combo players is sideboarding is not easy that's all I know <laughs> sideboarding is not an easy thing to do so again if I saw evidence of if I smelled a Tormon's Crypt or a Nihil Spell Bomb, or Scrabbling Claws, I don't care what, it's anything like that, then Pit the Needle would be an auto-include on the play. On the draw, I think we are just going to full power steamroll this guy as long as you have even an above average hand. Dustin appears to you know, be having a little bit of uh, a crisis with his sideboarding, you know? Can't, can't seem to decide. Uh, it's definitely a tough spot. Like, we've already, I don't know, like there's so many cards you could theoretically board in. Right. Yeah. It's very tough. It's understandable. I mean, it's, it's not an easy thing to do. It is kind of awkward. Uh, his sideboard is positions that he has, you know, a great deal of answers to a card such as Death or Tremor and Iowa When we talked, you know, he has four Pithy Needle, uh, Thought Seizes, even the Chain of Vapors. But then he also has the, all the show and tells to let him sidestep him. So it's kind of uh, it's kind of awkward when you're sideboarding in such a way that, like, well, I can sidestep this hate or I can board in these cards that are directly good against it. Yeah. If I do both of these things, uh, I'm just diluting my deck and making right. it weaker. You really want to pick one. I am. Uh, do you want to fight the hate card, or do you want to dodge it? I think dodging it would be better, uh, especially because it makes a replicate good. Again, we saw how if even you pit the needle turn one against a death on turn one, Andrew taps, replicates it in the turn, removes the original from the game. You know, it's just you just can't you can't uh, fight the hate when their bad cards stop your fight, <laughs> if you will. It might be not the way you want to position yourself. Right, and I think even if Pithy Needle, which it is a good card, I don't four a four of in a combo sideboard is huge. Has a lot of Pithy Needles. Yeah. 
curious to see how this one goes down. We'll see if Dustin adjusted his deck any differently, uh, being on the play. And we'll see how Andrew decides to approach mulliganing from the draw, where it's uh, you know much more dangerous. And obviously, right. we talked about the value of a Deathrite Shaman, but Deathrite Shaman is a little weaker on the draw. Right, because Dustin, Dustin can't can just kill you. Off, yeah. yeah. All right, so uh, let's see. Dustin might. There's some hands Dustin has that Andrew just can't beat. And Andrew, Andrew snap mulligans. Right, yeah, yeah. That's usually the sign of a mana issue. Uh, Dustin keeps bad news for Andrew. <laughs> Re Reanimator keeps, I'm, I'm definitely worried. Yeah, the Reanimator probably keeping on the play. Uh, obviously, Andrew has to be concerned. That can mean a number of things. The, the most likely thing is something as simple as a careful study in a reanimation spell, uh, plus some lands, or even in tomb reanimation spell. Any number of turn two kills are going to be really easy to represent here for Dustin is he would keep all of those hands with quick confidence, and all Definitely. of those hands are excellent against a deck that's primarily relying on Death Rage Shaman for its hate. Exactly. Uh, as we saw earlier, him is no uh, is no uh, ace in the hole there for Charlotte's Bug. Mm -hmm. It's actually almost just, I don't want to say in ineffective, but it's just not the greatest. It's rolling dice. I think I'd rather, literally have, a, and yeah, I think I'd rather <laughs> have a thought seize personally. So let's take another hand, and only in this situation. I'd rather right. have him in every other deck. <laughs> I guess <laughs> virtually every other deck with the card show and tell in it, you'd much rather have a him to Torok, generally right. speaking, but yeah. this is the one time where that's not necessarily true. All right, so we're down to six cards. Dustin, obviously, is probably See, Vision, Pretty Porcel, stoked. Shargle, Sage, and Abrupt Decay. God, that Abrupt Decay if hurts me every time. Some of those cards are lands. He may just be obligated to keep on the Force of Will strength. Looks like he does keep. Uh, I think we might have a Thought Seize here from Dustin, which is the only card I think he should have brought in, <laughs> to be honest. That in the show and tells. So we'll see if he does. What's going on here? Could be anything. He could also just be fetching to dodge a Stifle. It could be. Could but also be a Pithy Nail turn I would, one. I would assume we don't have Stifle uh, in our opponent's deck. Right. Once we saw the Shardos Agent, like we uh, we discussed before the game, that narrows so many cards our opponent could be playing. It does. Days, Stifle, all those cards are just straight out there. Here is a Thought Seize. And he, I like how he got Swamp because the opponent does have Wasteland. Mm -hmm. um, there's just no reason to be uh, too risky here. Uh, this hand is actually pretty strong. Two Shardos Agents. Uh, an Ancestral Vision, a Force of Will, an Abrupt Decay, and a Land. Andrew's plan, no doubt, suspend turn one Ancestral Vision. Uh, hope that Force of Will buys him enough time to actually get to it while he draws maybe some more relevant cards. Uh, I, th I think maybe you have to keep this on six. I don't think this is a snap keep by any means, but you, you probably don't want to go to five um, uh, with this hand. It's rough. It's got like it's got a lot of potentially meaningful It's got stuff. Yeah. I... Uh, I don't like it. I, I think I'm only in this hand. I mean, Andrew takes the Force of Will. Drew a land. That's pretty good. I, like, I think even like, like you said, four card Death Rite Shaman is probably better than that. Four land Death Rite Shaman. Sure, but uh, I mean, I can't, can't guarantee you'll get I mean, I'd, I'd keep the hand anyway. That's just going to uh, terrible at mulliganing. Uh, <laughs> I think the hand, uh, the hand meets, I don't know, the, the Jerry Thompson mulligan criteria, which is the hand can win and it is better than the average five. Uh, now, it's not better than a lot of relatively easy to get fives, as you said, you know, like just some lands of Death Rite Shaman are probably better than that hand, which is right. a very reasonable point, and that's not a very difficult hand to mulligan into. Yeah. Uh, but there are there are a lot of worse hands. Oh, yeah, yeah. Especially when we keep seeing a uh, broken record here, Abrupt Decay in the deck. You mulligan, <laughs> you see Abrupt Decay in your five, and eh, you were pretty much a four at that point. Unless Dustin kept in a uh, full complement of needles here. So, Dustin is playing his second land, saying go. Uh, he kept his hands. I'm assuming he has an Entomb here. In turn. Entomb Ooh. and Brainstorm are both very likely. I that him might be there. actually decent here. Uh, he didn't, Dustin didn't see it. It might catch him off guard. I think I see Iona, Exhume, Show and Tell, uh, and Brainstorm in Dustin's hand. Uh, and maybe a land. Now he's drawing some new ones with Brainstorm. This is a nightmare here. Why don't we see? Uh, uh, luckily, like... he, he does have... Uh, what card did he take with Thoughtseize? He took uh, Force, Force of Will, will right? Yeah. yeah, so he's he's no, he knows act with 100% certainty that the coast is clear now after this him results. Like, there's no way uh, Andrew can answer if he can able to get you know his uh, mm -hmm. his combo going here. So I see an Exhume there. So he oh he drew he drew Elishorn. That's interesting. Uh, yeah, so he has Elishorn, Exhume, Iona. So he uh, actually 
No, it just says the Elshorn. It wasn't. Okay. I thought I saw an Iota. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. So his end is actually not that strong. Show and tell for Elshorn is really, I mean, it's good, but like, your opponent's just like casual untapped Liliana. <laughs> right, yeah, right. Yeah, and you're yeah. like, well, uh, <laughs> all right. Yeah, yeah. I think it's actually one of the weaker uh, randomate yeah. cards. Uh, I, I would actually maybe yeah. be tempted to board it out. He might, yeah, he has Angel of Despair in his sideboard to switch with it, which might be better. It kills Shardless Angel, locks down Creeping Tarpit, kills Deathrite Shaman. Yeah, uh, it's, it's and it does make Baleful Strix a lot of I hit the Elsewhere hard, so we're going to be able to exhume this, which is obviously much better than Show and Tell here. Right. And he also hit the Pithy Needle that Dustin left in, as we can see. And Dustin has, it looks like a handful of Show and Tells and Exhumed in the land. So we're all in on this Elshorn. If that was a Grizzle Brand, obviously the game would be over. It is not. Luckily, you're only allowed to run four copies of Grizzle Brand. <laughs> so here we go with a. Uh, How many would you run, Shaheen? I think I'd run like seven, eight in this deck. I mean, he's got seven reanimate targets total, I, so I think I, seven I, is probably. I think I'd run close six right in an Iona. I'd six in an Iona? Six in right. an Iona. And then board in the Elshorn. Alright, so he shuffles because he knows the next card is a. Uh, garbage card on top the land I think um, Dustin now is in the market for a grizzle brand that's what he would like to purchase with this yeah. show and tells uh, for once reanimator is sitting here hoping to just draw a fatty nothing else right uh, everything else is actually slightly worse than just peeling a grizzle brand off the top uh, obviously you can you know draw a brainstorm draw careful study set it up that way it'll still be waiting a turn since right. he's stuck on three mana with show and tells it's important to mention that Andrew drew another land and if without these running land, he wouldn't be able to cast any of these cards in his hand. Yeah. So it's, it's actually a ball game here. Shardos Asian is about to play uh, uh, amateur unexpected results. Right, yep. Seems most likely. And uh, I'll be interested to see if Dustin, if that Pithonia was a misdirection, which I think it should have been after Cyborg, this game would have been a lot different. Yeah. And him would have hit Andrew in the face. Oh, Force of Will, that's a great card as well. Andrew's going to hope his Ancestral Vision unsuspends and finds him uh, a Liliana of the Veil. The downside being, Andrew is actually playing a very light list for a Liliana of the Veil. He only runs one copy. Uh, he does also have access to a Singleton Maelstrom Pulse and two Jace the Mind Sculptors. Those right. are his four answers that can get an Elishnor off the table. Uh, unknown to him, however, Jace, not as effective as he might have hoped. No, and he actually doesn't play the Shardless Agent. I don't like that play. I think you play it. Uh, worst case scenario... Hopefully you don't have another Rotator deck. I keep bringing this up. Yeah. But if he has a him, great. If he has hits a brainstorm, fantastic. And vision, I mean, who cares if it dies? You know? I think he's worried about the fact that you know he does have ten creatures that it can hit, which will all die except for the Tarmogoyf, which will be pretty ineffective. And that's a, a reasonable concern, I suppose. But I agree. When I have two in my hand, I'm probably willing to burn one. Hope right. I hit an ancestral bit. Hope I hit a brainstorm. Hope I hit a him. Yeah. There's um, just so many good cards you have, especially the him. If the him would have hit there, it would have hit probably. At least one or maybe both of those show and tells. So he only had three cards in his hand. So obviously he drew a Tide uh, Spout Tyrant. Tide Spout Tyrant. And that is a card whenever you play a spell, I think you get a Bowser Permanent. Is that, is that what it does, I think? I'm pretty right. sure. Big flying monster. Uh, it looks like Andrew would have hit a Tarmogoy for the Shardos Agent just for the, you know, the benefit of discussion. Right. And his hand is now uh, pretty mediocre. One of the things that I think you have to do with your Shardos Agent here, like we were discussing, you're actually a favorite to hit a card that's bad. Right. Uh, which is not where you want to be with Shardos Agent. Usually with Cascade cards, you try and play them when you know they're going to be good. Right, but right. when you're farther, the farther behind you are in a game, the lower percentage of shots need to be for you to want to take. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. If, if you're losing if your best a game play by is, a lot, uh, yeah. take the tiny percentage. If your best play is go uh, over that, you probably should go for it. I definitely like uh, trying to win rather than uh, hoping, hoping to get more value out of the card. Uh, Andrew's fetch here kind of seems to indicate he plans to cast two Tarmogoyfs. Maybe a Jace. I don't know if he has a Jace. I don't think he drew one. I don't one. think he drew one. He drew I a think force. he just has two Tarmogoyfs. Um, unless he drew another force, I think he burned the first one on Show and Tell. I think he drew time. another force. I don't think I see one, but I'm not sure. I know I see Goyf Goyf a Agent. Is that another agent? Yeah, yeah you're I think right. It's another agent. Looks like we're getting a count on those Tarmogoyfs. Instant sorcery, land, creature, artifact, five. So, three. Yeah. <laughs> not, not ideal, but you know, what are you going to do? He really needs that Unless extra point of toughness so he can block without losing one. Right, right, right. So he, he would really like... It's actually a four. I don't think it's a creature. Just kidding. Okay. If there's not a creature, then uh, that's, that's not ideal. And they're keeping the die on the side this time. Uh, so these turn are two, three. Do not be deceived by the die. <laughs> yep, the die is lying to you. 
Uh, Dustin is actually going to show and tell here and play a uh, tied spout tyrant. He's going to do a little work with a fun card here. Yeah, the, the biggest plus to playing the show and tell for some tied spout tyrant here is actually that it keeps Andrew from being able to draw Lily out of the band anymore. Right. The Elshorn is by far the better creature uh, in this spot. Andrew put Shardless Agent into play to, to pump his Tarmogoyce. To make them into uh, five sixes, but actually three yeah. power. Uh, still can't kill Elshorn. I, um, I, don't, no, I don't think I like that play. I mean, obviously, if we had just played one of these Shardless Agents before, this would already have occurred. So that in and of really itself is a plus. But also, you know, we need to hit something to beat two fatties. Yeah. That flyer by itself is going to kill Andrew in two attacks. Unless he's planning to just start chumping now. Oh, he's five, he is 5-6 now. But minus the, he's only 3 now. Right, so. but now if he's 4... Oh, sorry, he is only 3. Okay, right, I did so have yeah. it right. Yeah, so the double block won't do anything. He's got to just... He has to chump here because then he's dead by one attack. Right, he does have to go ahead and throw his oh, guy down. He is not chumping, so he is just saying, you know what, I'm going to hope the top part of my deck is something. But we all know that there's nothing really in his deck besides a Maelstrom Pulse. And that's not even that good here. I guess the Jace would also be okay. <coughs> yeah. But, uh, looks like he has Shardless Agent. Can that hit anything? Uh, nope. Don't see anything in the main or side that that could theoretically hit. And to kind of cap off the end of this match, I, you see he's had that same Abrupt Decay in his hand the entire game. Mm -hmm. It's just a card that is relatively weak in this matchup. And oh, well, he could hit... Shardos Agent into Baleful Strix. The card draws him Dismember, and he dismembers Tidespout Tyrant to stay alive. That's, right. uh, that's a line he can take. Very good. Let's, uh, let's run that's the... All let's run. Or Ooh, that's that also even, works even better than Baleful Strix. The Baleful Strix is a way cooler one. He only has one card. <laughs> yeah. don't, we don't get nearly you as big a sweat. You named a way cooler card than that. Uh, Land Land Notion Thief. That's not going to do it. No. And now Andrew is... Dead. Super dead. Yeah, he's going to uh, incite an attack here. Dustin gladly with his uh, deck that is meant to play one thing and hit you with it will gladly hit him. And that'll be it. Attack you for a billion in the air. He's thinking, is there anything? He's going to actually, he's doing the right play. He's playing spells first to bounce land and then he's going to kill him. I mean, why not? In case yeah. he has die or not all, he won't even do it. Oh, never mind, he's going to kill him. Andrew extends the hand. He's like, uh, quit messing with me. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> That'll put Andrew out of top eight contention, uh, not running it back, following his sterling finish. Were these records 